He's coming this way. Yeah, so cool. You're not getting that glare. It's almost like he knows you're uh, taking pictures. God, wow, like his tentacles go quite a distance beneath him. He's the color of a bruise. <laughs> He's what? He's bruise colored. <laughs> able to run the needle on the electricity run in the left in the motor. Wow. Be careful. Be careful. Lynn just left for work. I sent her off with a belly full of pancakes. Uh, while we were working before, I realized I've got this library behind me uh, full of books she and I have acquired throughout the years that are all nautical related, marine related. A number of them have proven invaluable in our efforts to maintain and sail inconceivable. And I thought I'd go through a few of the select volumes that I found most useful. have some of them are just for fun um, they're all very useful first and foremost the most essential um, Chapman piloting uh, this is the the seamanship go-to book anything related to uh, having a craft on the water how boats relate to each other uh, uh, terminology it's all in here there are chapters that I was like oh, I'll just skip this but I read it like chapters on uh, harbor terminology. I thought I knew what a dock was. I didn't know what a dock was. Um, a jetty, yeah, I, I thought I knew what a jetty was. So, this is a very handy book. Um, it gets into uh, boat, not just boat handling, but uh, uh, like right of way and, and things. It, it's extremely, extremely important that boaters know everything that's in this book. It doesn't just cover the basics, because this is a big book, but uh, it's a good one to have. On that same note, uh, the Annapolis, very similar to the Chapman, but it's more directly sailboat related. Um, points of sail and uh, the differences between designs, you know, fin keels, full keel, 
um, how to rig your boat, how to, to uh, trim sails, uh, all that sort of thing. Uh, it's covered in this book. It's extremely uh, helpful. Uh, Nigel Calder is a boat maintenance and repair genius and he's written a number of books uh, um, that help boat owners in maintaining, repairing, uh, uh, and sailing, driving their boats. Uh, this one in particular, the Boat Owner's Electrical and Mechanical Manual, or is it Mechanical and Electrical Manual? I thought I knew all there was to know about 12 volt electrical systems. I did not. Uh, you know, I thought batteries, wires, switches, it's all very simple, low voltage. No. Uh, these batteries on our boats can kick out 1,000 plus amps. Uh, there's a lot of current running around in this, these boats and the boats are made of flammable material so understand your electrical system it's even just 12 volt understand your electrical system because the the safety and security of everyone on board not to mention just you know keeping your boat around uh, it depends on a, a, a well-maintained well-designed and well-maintained electrical system this book will help you in that regard. He also, Nigel Calder also wrote uh, this very simple, it's a thin book, but marine diesel engines. Uh, a marine diesel engine, a diesel engine in general, is a very simple engine. Uh, they're, they're not complicated at all. It's not like you open the hood of a modern car and you see, oh, um, diesel engines are very simple. That being said, it's very important you understand how to maintain a diesel engine. Well maintained, you know, change the oil regularly. Uh, change your, your fuel filters, clean fuel is very important for a diesel engine. You do these things, your diesel engine will run a very long time, um, which is important. You're out in the middle of the water, you've got the engine running, you don't want that thing to quit. Very helpful book. Thank you, Nigel Calder. Uh, all right, those I would consider kind of must-haves for maintaining uh, your boat. Now we'll get into some of the things that are just, you know, helpful guides. Uh, the Eldritch, if you cruise around the Northeast, you should have a copy, a current copy of the Eldritch on your boat. Um, I know a lot of people are like, oh, it's just a tide table. It's not just tide tables. You go in here, the tides, how they relate to currents, how the re tides relate to other tides in a, you know, kind of a macro scale. Um, it's so helpful. When we did the transit, all I had to do was look up low tide at the battery and I could see how the currents change by the hour relate to other tides. We made that trip from City Island to Gateway Marina in like six hours. We took our time, we did some sailing, we had fun because we timed it right with the tides and the currents. Had we not done that, a six hour trip could have turned into an all day get home at night kind of trip. So it's very important. It makes cruising so much easier. Uh, you can sail with confidence knowing that you've got the tides in your favor, the current in your favor. It's very important. You know, I grew up on, on lakes in the Midwest. Even the Great Lakes, there's no tides. A seiche. A seiche is like, you know, you get six, eight inches. When we were on City Island, our tide was like, the tidal range was in the six foot range, something like that. It's similar. Uh, in Gateway, not quite as much, but it's a significant difference. And that's a lot of water moving in and out. Uh, Rockaway Inlet, the, the current's up to, to two plus knots. You know, if, if you're sailing in light air and you're making three knots and you're, you're bucking a, a two and a half knot current, oh my God, if you're beating up a two and a half knot current doing three knots, you're going backwards. You know, you see the water going by, you look at the land and the land is going, Help yourself. Get get a copy of the Eldritch. Ah, oh. oh, Brian Toss. I have learned so much from this guy. This is Brian Toss, uh, the Rigger's Apprentice, the complete Rigger's Apprentice. You know my my trick, a uh, left hand bowling for the starboard sheet. Thank you, Brian Toss. Uh, the the six ways to tie a bowling. Everybody has their favorite way of tying a bowling. You see somebody else do it a different way. Oh, you do it a different way. There's six different ways in here. That's probably not all of them but 
It's amazing. Some of the ways he ties a bowl in, there's a way to tie a bowl in with one hand. Just blows my mind. And that's just a small part of what's in this book. Maintaining your standing rigging, very important. Brian Toss, thank you very much for writing this book. The Ashley Book of Knots. If you don't already have this book, get this book. It's ginormous, um, but every knot, variations of knots, uh, knots you shouldn't tie, ways not to tie a knot. Uh, it's just like everything in here, hitches, uh, bends. Oh my God, they're all in here. It's enormous, this book. I just, I get a little, oh, my Clifford Ashley. Yes, Clifford. Uh, boom, navigation. I, I picked this book up, uh, I watched a video online. There's a, there's a Celestial Navigation series online, and I'm sorry, I forgot the guy's name, but it's a very good uh, series. He recommended a bunch of a bunch of books. Do I have them here? Yeah, I like the Barefoot Navigator. Um, I believe he recommended this, Common Sense Celestial Navigation by Hewitt Schellerith. Schellerith. Hewitt Schellerith. He's English, and he's got a very dry English sense of humor. Um, I'm so sorry about the accent. Uh, anyway, if you like Monty Python, if you like Eddie Izzard, uh, that English sense of humor, you will like this book. It, he takes what is otherwise, hi Maxi, what is otherwise a very kind of academic, dry topic and, and makes it more interesting. Um, if you have any interest in celestial navigation, pick up this book's uh, Common Sense Celestial Navigation. It's very good. And with that in mind, the Barefoot Navigator by Jack Lagan. Um, this book, if you're in the middle of an ocean and everything starts to fail, your chart plotter's burnt out, uh, your watch stopped working, no clocks, compass is broken, this guy is going to get you safely to port. Uh, it's kind of beautiful what's in here. There's, there's a classic, like, ancient navigation techniques that he covers that that will save your life potentially it's a good one it's also it's just interesting because the stories are kind of anecdotal and and beautiful in their own way i love it also when it comes to navigation knowing how to get places and there's a lot of cruising guides this is a, a cruising guide it's not really a cruising guide it's world cruising routes let me just say it. Uh, jimmy cornell wrote world cruising routes it's not like where to anchor it's not where to eat um, where to buy the cheapest hat this is a guide to get you from point A to point B uh, from the easiest Florida to the Bahamas to something epic like uh, uh, Hawaii to Panama is in here these are logistic nightmares unless you're, you're prepared his experience his knowledge useful very useful to a cruising sailor uh, i recommend that book also on the topic of navigation you know nautical almanac sight reduction tables this is the old uh, this is last year's almanac i have uh, this year's on the boat um little inconceivable not that i have a sextant uh that's one of the things that's on my list of to get another handy reference voyaging on a small income our friend patrick who you've seen in the videos Patrick loaned me his copy uh, a number of years ago, and we loved it so much that we picked up our own. Uh, Lynn got this, I think, as a present for me, or a present for us. Um, uh, Annie Hill, she wrote this book for people that are on a tight budget, limited income, that want to do some serious voyaging. Uh, and she covers everything from, from how, to, how to do maintenance cheaper, cooking, uh, everything, even the boat itself. The, there are boat designs in here that are uh, low maintenance type boats. Uh, most of them are these junk rig, you know, unstayed masts, so you, you're not dealing with a, a lot of standing rigging. It's a little old, so the numbers don't add up. 88, yeah. Uh, so the numbers are a little different, but it's still very useful. Uh, it's very good. Thank you, Annie. And now the fun ones. Uh, this beautiful book i got this on sale um at barnes and noble years ago long before i was even contemplating having a boat i was still thinking oh, a boat would be nice but I, I found this at barnes and noble and it just 
I sat down on the carpet and went through this from uh, cover to cover. It is so beautiful. There are some amazing, amazing boats in here. Unfortunately, most of them are no longer in production. They're all still available. Uh, I don't know if you're like me, you go on to Yacht World all the time and just, you know, peruse the, the dream the dream boats. It's an actual term, dream boats. I have dream boats, and some of them are in here. Uh, of course, top of the list, uh, top of the price range, Cherubini. Uh, look up Cherubini yachts. They are so beautiful. Classic looking uh, schooner bow. Oh, they're just so beautiful, Cherubinis. Um, uh, but they're, they're more um, budget-friendly. <laughs> Well, Pacific Seacraft's not really budget-friendly, although the Pacific Seacraft Flicka, have you ever seen a Flicka? They're these little tiny, they're called micro ships. They're, it's a little 20-foot boat uh, made by Pacific Seacraft. It's a solid 20-foot boat, and these boats have circumnavigated. Uh, Pacific Seacraft Flickas have gone around the world um, because they are so seaworthy. You, you read stories about Flickas sailing in conditions where other people are like three reefs and they're still ripping sails. Um, Flickers are just chug, 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 chug. Fantastic boat. Also in this book, uh, the Sam Morris um, Bristol Channel Cutter is such a beautiful, classic, uh, it's, a, it's a channel cutter design, or based on a channel cutter design. It looks like one of those old Bristol cutters. Um, long bowsprit and boomkin, big rig, beautiful, beautiful boat and will take you anywhere. Solid, solid boat. A lot of room. It's only 28 feet, um, but it's it's a lot of boat for 28 feet. And and they're relatively reasonably priced online. You can find uh, um, some relatively cheap Bristol Channel cutters. Really great, really great book. Can you tell I like it? Oh, that's a big, big stack. Um, another fun one, the Marlin Spike Sailor. Harvey Garrett Smith. He, Harvey Garrett Smith uh, wrote two, uh, or I have two of his books, I'm sure he wrote more. The Marlin Spike Sailor and The Art of the Sailor, they're both about uh, rope work, basically, and cord, cordage, cord work, making things out of, out of ropes and cords and, and anything, fiber, um, some knots. What do you want, buddy? Yeah, it might be time for you to go out. Hi. Um, it's really handy. All the whipping, um, lashing that I've done on Inconceivable, uh, there, there are things in this book like that that just make your, your boat just more boaty. Instead of using a pipe clamp to hold something on a, on a stanchion, lash it onto your stanchion. It's, it looks so much better and it's, it'll last longer than a freaking pipe clamp. It's not going to mark up your stanchion. It's just lashing things. So, so, so cool. Um, and of course the whipping of lines and whatnot. You've seen me do that on the videos. That's a fun book. Um, and the last one I grabbed, um, this is a biography, sort of a, a boat designer's biography. Uh, Ian Outred, A Life in Wooden Boats. Um, Ian Outred designs, he's a modern designer, designs some incredibly beautiful wooden boats. Um, these are modern, modern designs but they look, they're the classic looking boats. They look like classic work boats, skiffs and, and dories. And oh, it's just really beautiful and very interesting character too. Um, oh, there he is surfing down a wave. <laughs> He's surfing down a wave. That's awesome. Oh, he looks like, he looks so salty. This guy should have a pipe sticking out of his mouth. Um, this is a beautiful book, Ian Altrid. And look up his designs online. You can find Ian Outred on the internet. Um, and it's just really beautiful boats. They're not expensive plans, and a lot of them are really, they're all relatively easy to build. There's different varying levels of, of uh, difficulty, but um, they're doable. A Severn at the club, you've seen his Tammy Nori. That is an Ian Outred design. Beautiful, beautiful boat. Uh, Severn did a really beautiful job. I love seeing that boat, the, the gaff rig. It's just incredible to see that boat on the water. Anyway, that's the that's that's my list. It's a shortish list of books you should have. Uh, books I really enjoy having in our library, um, but uh, you know, I highly recommend 
building a nautical library, uh, it just makes, even if you don't have a boat, it's a great kind of like gateway drug to sailing, to having a sailboat. Yeah, so that kind of covers our library, and I hope you enjoyed that little snippet. All right, Max, let's go for a walk. Come on, go for a walk. I was just thinking about texting you. Hey. How are you? What's up, buddy? There's where the action is. Sunset Why are you such a baby?